Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome back. My name is Fizz, and today we're going to be doing an Atlas tutorial. That's right. Today I'm going to show you guys kind of the basics about how to set up a server grid, aka an Atlas server grid editor tool. I'm going to kind of go over the basics and stuff and kind of go into like, you know, how the whole thing works for say. Granted, I'm not an expert. I have set up our own server, private Atlas server uh, at Creator Zen. That's ours with a bunch of other cre content creators and stuff. So I know a couple things about it. And a lot of people have been asking me how I figured it out. And to be honest, trial and error baby trial and error so i figured i'll showcase my information about it i'll do it two different videos uh this will be just showcasing how it works and then the other one will be how to customize your in-game map to not be that disgusting blue that'll be another video but anyways let's get started Alrighty, so the first thing you want to do is actually go down below in the link description. Uh, Zenro is actually the one I guess in charge of updating the uh, Atlas map editor. So if you want the most updated one, he'll usually tweet about it right here. This is the latest one that, uh, as of recording this video, is January 31st, and the and the uh, it goes to the GitHub. And basically, you want to just go here and you want to go to code. And clone and download and basically download the zip and it's very straightforward and just doing that but make sure you check on his twitter or also um other feeds because this he is the one that updates it so you want to make sure you always have the up-to-date one because i'm pretty sure there is no automatic update feature for it so this will be the only way to make sure you have the latest updated version of the map editor so make sure go follow zenro on twitter because he's a great guy fantastic guy so let's get started so i made a desktop shortcut real quick for it to be right here so it's just a little bit easier um it's just it's a lot easier to open and close it a lot of times so but anyways just click on it and open now there's one thing i want to go over this before we even start and this is from my experience i've done a lot of hours with this island editor map editor atlas ma map editor whatever you want to call it i've done a lot of hours on it i'm not an expert of this this is just from my experience so whatever i'm doing you don't have to follow it at all but this is what i have done to make it actually very feasible for me to actually get the server running for our private server so i there's two different ways i'll go over what i did first and then i can go over what you guys can do and if you want to do your own preset there's a couple things you need to remember so the Atlas ID, you can do whatever you want. The friendly name is basically the Atlas name, so if you wanted to change that, you could. Um, the cells, this is basically how big. So if you wanted to do a one by one, it's a one by one. If you want to do two by two, you can do it by two by two. It depends. It's, this is basically the size. You want to do a uh, 36 by 36. <laughs> have fun. Uh, but if you're just doing a test server, you can just do a one by one. Cell size. Now remember this. The default cell size you really want to do because this is what the official server cell size are 1 million 400. So make sure you have it at 1 million 400,000. Okay, because this you can have it smaller, don't get me wrong, you can have it smaller, but the recommended size for hosting your own server is 1 million 400,000 because that's basically how this the game runs. I don't know why. <laughs> And then you can leave all this blank because you don't really need to do anything. And uh, you can just put a 1 or a 0. I, I think this is just a 0. And then you can do create. And there you go. There's your, your one cell. Um, but like I said, I didn't do it this way because I'll show you why. Because there was a lot of presets that you missed from not having these. For instance, if you go to edit and you also do server templates, there isn't any. You have to make your own templates, meaning you can't set the official deserts, you can't set the official tropics, you can't set the official tundras, temperates. You have to make them all by scratch. So what I recommend is using a preset what they've made, the 2x2 two two or the 4x4, four four, because they actually have uh, the server templates, the polar, temperate, equator, desert, tropic, and tundra. That's what I did. You don't have to do that, but you'll have to make your own temperatures and everything, which I think is a lot more work if you don't really know what you're doing. And, well, for me, that was a lot of work. Alrighty, so, after you figured out what kind of preset you want to do, or if you want to do your own custom one, 
let's get started. So, you have a bunch of different things on this page, and we're going to go over this. You have your islands on the far right with their um, size and their names, etc. You have their actual map itself, which actually has the islands and the discovery points and all the other information. And then lastly, you have down here all the other information that you want to do. Uh, like water background, uh, export alpha background, show paths and, and ship paths, etc. Show server info. That's the servers that they would be. You don't really have to do that if you're gonna. Uh, that's just extra stuff. I don't. I don't know why it's even here because we didn't. We don't use it for our server, so I have no idea why there's a server information thing like uh, what the server is, etc. But uh, I guess for organization, maybe. It's you can use it, but anyways, I'll go over that and show name, etc. And then you also have up here. There is the projects, edits, export, tests, and help. Uh, never use tests, so I don't know what it does. So don't touch it. Help is very good because this shows um, how to basically do everything. So to how to control the islands, how to zoom in, how to delete things, how to add ship pass, how to etc. Edit the discovery zones, how to blah 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 blah, all this other stuff. It's quite handy. It's pretty good. And uh, what I do is make sure you copy and paste all these and put it on a spreadsheet next to you, so you don't have to keep clicking this. Because if you click this, you can't do anything. It's it's kind of annoying. I wish it was like a hot thing that you could put right here, and then you could still do things. So remember, um, but muscle memory will probably help you out anyways on remembering all this stuff so let's start by uh explaining how this works uh so let's go over to here so these are your islands these are what they look like this is what their sizes are in game and this is their level name now these level names are actually very important i actually figured this out roughly the end of the development of my server is basically these are kind of a coded name so for instance freeport servers uh, islands for say are actually at the end or E's uh, which is a, a dash with an E these are each one of these is a free port uh, on the official server now don't get me wrong it, you don't have to actually use these if you don't want a free port on your server if you wanted to actually add this island for say this one right here this is a free port island uh, I could just add it to the map and not actually add a spawn to it uh, but it still would act as a free port function but just not a spawn zone per se if you think about it um, and also there is uh, the dungeons, which is the uh, the hell islands for the power stones. Uh, you can also add those, but where uh, they have PVE at the end. Let me see if I can find one real quick for you guys to show you what it looks like. Ah, right here. So this one right here is a dungeon. Uh, as you can tell, there's four different variations of it, but this is the dungeon one because it has PVE. Uh, and also, if you want, the Atlas Wiki, I think, is a little bit updated now that you can actually search what these islands are technically are. But there's also, also a trick because right now you can't really tell what's on these islands, per se, in this map out of there. So, for instance, if I went to go look at this island right here, uh, the information that I would get from this island is it's a tropical island. It's got canopy oak. Don't know what that means. And it's a... That's it. That's the information of the island. I have no other information about this island on what spawns here, what the resource is. And it's honestly very kind of just blindsided on not understanding what each island has. The only kind of clue you have is the actual name itself, which is this name right here. And also what the actual temperature of the island is on the extra sub levels. Uh, other than that, you really can't tell what's in every zone and island. So you have to do a lot of research on the uh, Atlas Wiki because they have been starting to add... Uh, for instance, K-A-E-E -E is a tropical, maybe, and it has bears and all this other stuff has this resource iron, you know, etc. So there could be a lot of research. Uh, but if you don't want to do any of that, you can just drag an island and plop it down and call it good. If you don't really care about having your grid be, you know, temperature gaze perfect. All right, so I got a little carried away, and I kept I already plopped an island in there, but I wanted to go over a couple a uh, couple of things before we do. So there is a uh, setting down here, which is called the show server information. Um, this allows you to see what the template temperature that you have set. Which uh, obviously, if you're not using the preset, you won't know because it will just be generic one. It won't be a temperature really or anything. Um, it also tells you if it's a free port, tropical, free port, or any of the other server inf information. And also it tells you if you have islands locked, discovery points locked, and ship paths locked. 
locked. And if you don't want them locked, you need to go up to here, go to edit edit locks and you need to unlock them because that's the only way to move these things now i granted uh this is what i would do if you're trying to edit the discovery zones make sure the island's locked if you're trying to edit the ships make sure both of these are locked you know kind of simple uh but we're gonna unlock everything for now because we need to move things around uh but anyways yeah so let's uh let's shut this off let's uh let's get rid of that and let's just have a blank area so let's let's rework the top right square so let's go up here. So we plopped an island earlier, right? Um, let's just click on it and delete it. We don't want it. Let's also get rid of this one, this one, and this one. And let's get rid of both of these because we don't really want either of those. Let's start with a fresh brand new square. So obviously, like I said earlier, to add a new island, all you need to do is drag from here over and plop it here. If you want to figure out what the island per se kind of has... Uh, you can use your middle mouse button and actually uh, click on it and it can actually tell you, okay, I thought this island was tropical. Uh, clearly, it's a low desert. So if I want to have it, there you go. If I don't, you just come here and delete it. So a lot of these are, per se, tricking you because a lot of them are not the same. So for instance, these two islands right here, okay, they're very, very close. They have the same exact image, but they're actually probably completely different. This is a tropical one. What is this one? Nothing. It actually has nothing. Don't use that island. <laughs> I don't know why that island has nothing. Let's do another example. What's this one? This is a low desert. These are exactly two of the same islands in shape, for say, on the map, but they're completely different. This is a tropical island, but this is a low desert. So a lot of the, what they did is basically made a template of each and every island, and then they made five different variations for like a tundra, tempera, tropical, and, and desert. But when you look in game on your map, it's like, oh, this is the same island at D2. But in reality, it's completely different it's it, it's it's very interesting how they did this and it's it's really cool because it saves on um it makes the game feel fresh because you're like oh this is the same island it's not it's completely different it's a completely different desert temperature and and gaze on the on the whole thing so it's very cool so um i would go through this so we're gonna do this as a and the pole we're gonna make it cold we're gonna change this to the pole we're gonna make this a desert very quickly so i'm just gonna quickly find a bunch of islands that are polar um and we're gonna make this a cold environment all right so give me one second so now you have your preset islands uh this the uh, cubic square the cell um let's start naming them and having uh adding discovery discovery is basically the thing that you can max to level up basically so officials like 52 or something like that max level uh with these this is basically when people go to the island this is what the island name is and this is what they, they get for discovery points so to um add one you need to shift left click on the uh, map uh, just in the big area and you can make a giant cubic square um gold thing this basically allows you to make the discovery zone so when they start sailing right here this will be like uh landfall for discovery so you want to make sure it's kind of basically the same size as the island uh you can do that by kind of just adjusting it etc and also just like the island uh you can also rotate it with right click on one of the corners um and basically you can do that so to now edit it you need to left click on one of these um, these corner pieces you need to control uh, sorry I keep clicking the wrong thing uh, you need to shift left click on one of these and there it is so this is basically the zone ID the size of the zone the zone um, etc you don't need to change any of these but you need to change this right here zone so we're gonna name this Hoth Rock and that right there my friends will show what is in game this island is called Hoth Rock and we can um, get rid of the, where is it? We can get rid of the island name so you guys can see it a little bit better. And that's pretty cool. There you go, Hoth Rock. Pretty cool. You can technically do smaller ones. So I would suggest that there's a special feature on this island and you wanna name it to something like, for instance, maybe there is a giant glacier piece right here. Um, put this, put the smaller ones first and then put the bigger one on top because um, if you see, you can't really, you can't move this one a lot. It, it, it's, you know, a lot of times you get connecting with this um, and, and stuff. Alrighty, so we had the spawns. With the discoveries, we need to add ship paths. So what you need to do is just simply P. That's it. 
uh, P adds a ship path basically to the server. Uh, what you can do is basically you can set these to basically be do anything. The ghost ship or the trading ship. Mostly that's basically what they're used for. You could technically add the ghost, the uh, siege of the dam ships. But they already naturally spawn so you don't really have to add those unless you really want to. I don't know why you would want to but yeah. Um, the blue circle is where the um, entity will spawn and basically this is the path they can go through other server grids so if you set something up like this um, yeah uh, right click you can hold right click into adjust their um, rotation and etc they're kind of fun um, that's basically all you need to do for these uh, you need to also edit their um, control left click and basically this is how you add uh, the server thing Okay, I actually went and gotten the information. So if you wanted to add the ghost ship, put it in the uh, description down below. Uh, you need to change the path name to ghost ship. You need to set the um, auto spawn entity UTC intervals to uh, uh, 21,600. Um, I don't know what the hell that even does. It's, it's just off the official server. And then you need to add the blueprint path for the ghost ship, which is that. It also be in the description and uh apply and now we have the ghost ship spawns here and it goes around in a circle and it terrorizes people on the, on this little cubic cir uh, circle that we just made um pretty cool that's that's how you do it if you want to add a trade ship you just need to change this to be a uh, trade i think it's trade ship and then you do like one let me double check real quick. All right, so to change this to have um, the NPCs, you just basically do NPC Trader 1 in this. That's that's it. You don't have to put the auto spawn ship class or anything. You don't have to change that. And this basically will have the uh, trader ship, which is like the merchant ship that you can go around and uh, trade stuff. That's that's it. That's, that's basically how you do that. But I, I think adding the ghost ship to terrorize people is a little bit more fun if you if you think about it. Alrighty, so after you have set up your server to be having uh, what islands you want, your ex discovery zones and everything, there is a kind of a problem. So I stated uh, with one of the features of using a preset is there's a lot of different temperature gauging for the ocean and the background water as well as the environment itself uh, when you're not on the actual base land. Uh, so to change this, uh, as you can tell, the entire map right now is a tropical ocean, so I don't really want that. I want to have it more of a uh, kind of more than t one uh, temperature. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to control left click on the server grid itself, and I'm going to go under template, and I'm going to change this to polar. Now, remember what I said, if you did not use one of the templates uh, of the 2x2 or the 4x4, you will not have these. You'll have to make your own, which is pain, but... So I highly recommend uh, just doing that. So anyways, we're going to change that to polar. And now that region is in fact a polar region. So that means the water color has changed. The spawns in the ocean have changed as well as the how cold it has changed. Basically, it's not a tropical ocean anymore. It's a polar ocean. Very cool. We're going to change this down over here to desert and we're going to change this to uh tempered and then finally we're gonna just keep that yeah yeah forget it we're just gonna get rid of tropical we're just gonna have equator and uh now you there you go all the different grids are now different different temperatures and different colors uh pretty cool Alrighty, so I'm now going to go over how to actually add spawns to the server. So as of right now, I've deleted all the official templates, you would say, for spawning on the server. So you could technically not spawn anywhere on the server. There's no spawn points. You basically could join the server and not do anything because you couldn't spawn. Uh, to fix this, we need to actually dedicate a spawn server. So... Uh, once again, you need to go to show server information. Uh, you can set any of the grids that you have as a home server. This is basically the main server for say that controls all the other servers and as well as the spawn region for your server. So we're going to do control left click again on the main uh, server editor editing the server edit. Blah, 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 blah. And you want to do is home server set this one and we're going to just do this one. Uh, and set home server it'll turn this to be green because it's called freeport we could just change this to home freeport you can change it to whatever or you could just change it to just freeport i'll just change it to freeport to make it easy for you guys to follow so after you have done that um hopefully you've already picked your islands uh remember the ones that have e 
are the actual Freeport server uh, ser uh, islands for the official server. You don't have to do them at all uh, because I actually added this one right here is the dungeon island for Freeport. Oh, goody. So I'm going to have people spawn at that. <laughs> um, and basically, you can have these wherever you want. They don't have to be they don't have to be like this. You can literally have this one over here. You can have this one over here, here, here. Um, but they basically still designate on what they are. Um, thing we need to do though is we need to set these to actually be spawn regions uh so what you need to do is to control left control you want to have the little mouse uh little thing you want to left click on this and you need to change this right here the spawn point region override you need to change this to be starting at zero. Zero is the first spawn region of the spawn point on the server so for instance if you look at your server grid on official server when you click on like one of the free ports on official you'll have you click on the the square and it's say north south east and west this is basically designating on what they are in order so this will be the north one is always zero you want to change this next one to be one change this one to be two and need to change this one to be three so i don't know if you can actually for say go higher than three um but from my experience we have only four islands for freeport spawns and uh basically now they are sent to spawn report uh for spawning but there's a catch they're not actually set yet the game can't actually read them yet because we have to set that which is on the next step so the next thing you need to do after you have set each of these islands to be zero through three, you could probably go more. I, I honestly have no idea. So that's beyond you guys. Uh, you want to control left click again on the edit server thing. And you want to go down to spawn regions. So this is now going to showcase on exactly what the, uh, the islands are for say. So for instance, this goes in order from zero one two three four five whatever um obviously we have zero one two three so we're gonna just do this north we're gonna do this um east we're gonna do this next one um south actually you know what we could just we don't even have to say south. we can do um hell yeah just hell or have i on my server i have it hella nope Hello, nope. Isles. <laughs> no, I'm just going to call it Hello, nope. And uh, lastly, what we want to just do is uh, West. So now, when you save this, basically, this is now saying that this is North, this is East, this is Hello, nope, and this is West. And obviously, you can change these at any time. Uh, this is the partner cell. This is basically saying that the spawn regions for the server are in this region at 00. zero. Now, if you wanted to add, for say, another spawn island on another grid, you can do that. You just change this and do the whole process all over again. Alrighty, so there's a couple, we only got a couple more things left and then we're done. So let's start off by processing, finishing the server. Uh, so what you want to do is make sure you hide everything. The discovery zones, the server information, and also the lines, as well as the islands. So that way you have a perfect grid because what we're going to do now is make the map that you see in game for say, for say to show what people are looking at. So you want to go to export, export only map image. And you want to make sure you save this into a new area. So we're just going to do this. Um, my new server. And we're just going to save it here. You do not want to change this you must keep this the same name it will the server will not be able to read anything else if you change it so do not change the jpeg do not change the file name always keep it as is and we're just going to save it there now all we need to do is we need to do the individual cell so each one of these is called a cell you want to do exploit only cell image and it'll basically we'll put it in the same block right here and basically save so now what we have done is individually saved every single cubic cell in the uh the map that we just made for a closer image this is basically like a higher definition so when you zoom in it showcase a little bit better of the image per se uh, because if you zoom in with the bigger one it's a little it's actually not correct it's very fuzzy and stuff uh, so we just basically exported those and the last thing we need to do is you need to make sure you save your project under a JSON J J S O N file. So we're going to just save this to um, 
test um, video. And you, it doesn't matter. This is what mine is for. Uh, I have a YouTube four x four thing. Um, I always make sure I put the two by two or whatever. So we're gonna change that to be like that, and save this. You want to make sure you have this file, uh, the location with this, um, because you need this file. This file has all the server settings that we have just done for the server meaning the temperatures the spawns the islands everything without this j sun file you have nothing that's the whole server information right there it's kind of crazy if you think about it it's uh like an arc file it's basically the map file that controls all the servers and everything and it's really cool and um basically you just upload that to your server host and basically yeah i don't have um Sorry to say it, but I don't have an, um, a spare server, so I can't actually show you that kind of steps. But you can probably find another video on the YouTubes and stuff. And, uh, yeah, that's kind of it. That's kind of the basics of it. Now, there's a little bit of, uh, there's a lot of other things you can do, um, for say. But I wanted to have, like, a kind of a one introduction uh, video, then in a more advanced one. Uh, because this, uh, this stuff can be very complicated and be, can be a lot of time consuming. And the one thing I will say, ad advice if you're setting up your own server, is make sure you cost effective, uh, if you want to pay for 2x2 or 4x4, etc. Uh, for that, because it's a lot of money, as well as, um, you know, make sure you think about what, how you want your server to be actually set up. Now, you could be like me and kind of go beyond what you should probably be doing when you don't know what you're doing and uh, make a server that's kind of like this. <laughs> this is our private server. And as you can tell, I made kind of a lot of uh, it. Let's be honest. It's fucking cool. <laughs> this is the actual in-game map and everything. And um, um, it's really cool. And uh, I'll show you guys on the next video on how to do this because uh, it's quite frankly, it's 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 really cool. It's absolutely amazing. So, but yeah. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, if you guys like the video, leave a thumbs up, like, your comment, and hopefully it helped you out. If you have any questions, feel free. I'll be posting uh, the Nitrado help. I'll be posting the uh, Atlas Wiki, and I'll also be helping you guys in the comments if you need uh, information help because I'm not an expert. This is basically off of my experience of doing our own 4x4 server, and uh, I think I kind of figured stuff out. Hopefully the video was informable and helped you guys all out, but um, anyways, that's it. I love you all. Hopefully you enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next one.